All right. Good morning, Grace United Methodist Church. Good morning. It is Thursday, January 28th. Um, my name is Janet Salbert. I am one of the pastors at Grace, and I welcome you all to this time of morning prayer. Good morning, Judy. Kana, you are right on again. Glad to see you. Um, I've got my big old sloppy sweater on. It's like a furry, soft teddy bear around me because it's a, it's a really cold morning, and um, that's just the way it is um, today. So I have tried to bring some things that will warm our hearts uh, while we are in prayer today. Good morning, Victoria. Good morning, Carol. Yeah, it's great to see you guys on here. Um, I, I have the candle that is the light of Christ that we always begin with. But here, let me see if I can shift over. You can see over my shoulder. I also have my fireplace going because it's pretty cold out there. <laughs> I can, my house, I really hear the wind whistling. So I know we're expecting some storms later this weekend, but today I guess we're just beginning with um, some cooler weather. So good to be in a, in a warm and safe spot. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Sheila. Morning, Debbie. Morning, Sharon. Glad to see you. Hope you're well. Yeah, it's good to be together in this way. We'll give it a, a minute or so longer. So today I also, um, so I have this beautiful candle um, that has a nice little fragrance to it, but I also almost always have a candle lit that has a little electric tea light in it. Um, so two double fisted here with my candles, um, have some reasons for both um, prayers for uh, special situations in our congregation and also in my family. So um, just feel like that having lots of light around is good. Good morning, Terry and Jonathan. Yeah, great to see you today. Um, we follow along with this resource um, that I know Pastor Rudy uh, spoke about Love at Weems, who isn't part of this resource, but is certainly a model uh, for leadership and ministry that we can all appreciate and the stories that, that he shares. Um, this is Shane Claiborne's book, The Common Prayer for Ordinary Radicals. I think we are all ordinary radicals in some way. Uh, we may have different places where we are more radical than others. Uh, and so today I bring for you another saint. Uh, this is a modern day woman uh, who was born in 1909 and died in 1943. So a little bit more contemporary, but we will talk about her in a minute. Let me greet a few more folks. Hey, Hannah, glad you are here. Yeah, it's, it's uh, good to be together on this chilly day. So, um, and to know that we have roof beds and food in our stomach and praying for all those who are not as fortunate, um, those who are dealing with homelessness and hunger. Morning, Larry, glad that you're here. Yeah, yeah it may be a big snow. Um, that's what they're predicting. And, course we watch the weatherman and smile not always knowing if we're predicting or not but we shall see so this morning the text that I bring before you is from Ephesians this is from the Apostle Paul's writing this is from Ephesians chapter 5 um, so let's begin um, just listening for the word that might be available to us in this text today. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs 
from the spirit. Sing and make from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the word for us today, my friends. Yes, um, that this is a time that we all need to be careful how we are living, being careful uh, to avoid stepping into the traps that um, are out there. There's a lot of anger and division. The church are called to be a people of peace, and especially as uh, ordinary radicals, probably the most radical thing that we can care And we are also supposed to be those who appreciate the gifts that living in relationship with God is and that our hearts do fill with songs and prayers because of our gratitude, um, because of the ways that we see God's faithfulness. So I, I again, bring, with you, bring to you a modern day saint, a modern woman. Ah, let me greet a couple more. Good morning, Marilyn. Glad that you're here. Good morning, Kristen and Lynn. Sandy, yay. Good morning. Yes, Judy, you do sing to the Lord. And <laughs> morning connections with this loving community. Yes, this is a really important place for us to soak in. God's love and God's peace so that we can carry it further out into our world. So Simone Weil is the name of the saint that I bring before you. She was born in France. Uh, to Her parents were Jewish, but they were not religious. Um, they didn't have a, a practice. Simone was a brilliant woman. <laughs> Hi, Gracie. Hi. I'm so glad to see you this morning. I can't wait to see you Sunday. We will be baptizing Grace on Sunday. Simone uh, Wheel was highly educated. She had an intellectual mind, and just nothing um, uh, was left out of her her inquiry. She, she read literature. She studied science. She got into politics. Um, she was a brilliant, brilliant woman and eventually went on to teach high school students. And then she went to a labor college and taught there. So I want to share with you one of her quotes um, and, and kind of a an attitude that she carried with her in all of her teaching. And in short form, this quote says that attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. What she said was, never in any case, whatever is genuine effort of the attention it always has an effect on the spiritual plane. If we concentrate our attention on trying to solve a problem of geometry, if at the end of the hour we are no nearer to doing so than at the beginning, we have nevertheless been making progress each minute of that hour in another, more mysterious dimension. So without our knowing or feeling it, this apparently human effort that seems barren has brought more light into the soul. The solution of a geometry problem being a little fragment of a particular truth is a pure image of the unique, eternal, and living truth. So every school exercise, every problem we try to solve, thought of in this way, is a sacrament. I find that a fascinating way of thinking about not only teaching our students, 
a particular thing, not worrying if they don't get the answer to the problem, but knowing that every moment of their giving attention to that problem is, uh, has some greater dimension, has some greater mystery to bringing them closer to truth. I think we could think about that in terms of our life and the, the problems that we want to solve each day. And that even if we don't get any closer at the end of the day to solving the issue that we want to care for, that spending the time in it and giving our attention to it is an act of generosity and it is a sacrament. It is seen on a, a different dimension, on a different plane. Now, that's a very mystical thought from Simone Weil. Eventually, because she was teaching in a labor college, eventually she decided that in order to help um, those people who worked in factories, that she would go and work in the factories with him. So she left. She, her impulse was to sacrifice herself within the suffering of others. So she really went to join in solidarity. Now remember, she was raised by Jewish parents. So this was before she had an inkling of knowing Jesus in any way, shape, or form. But she had had some personal suffering. She was a young woman. She died when she was 34, so she was, she was young during this time. But she, she suffered from some migraines. And what she said about suffering, um, I, I want to read to you a portion from one of her books. And it's about finding God in the void. Um, she says, in each of our lives comes some kind of affliction, real affliction. It is an affliction of the body, felt in the body, in the mind of the body, and in the heart of the body. And we know that it's different from temporary pain because affliction has the power to enslave our souls in heavy chains. Affliction is an uprooting of life, a more or less attenuated equivalent of death. So she makes this paradox of saying that everyone has an affliction in fact, the word she used is void. Everyone has this void. And she said it's a double-edged sword that it can be ca it can take us into an abyss, especially if our choice is to escape the void, to flee from it, to use drugs or um, poor behavior to escape that kind of emptiness that we feel. But she said, if squarely and bravely faced, it can also hollow out a void within us that enables us to rise above our ego. We are so full of ourselves and our imaginings. But to touch the real, most of us require the humbling of this affliction, the humbling of this void. And as the ego shrinks, from the humbling encounter with the reality of our pain and suffering in that space, in that void, that is the place where the grace of the love of God can enter. And in fact, she says that it is by God's grace that we even are able to, to find that void in the first place. She said, if we don't have a void, we cannot give away the seed that God desires to plant within us. And we cannot know when that seed grows that it is a true seed. But because of what the void or the emptiness enables in us, we touch the grace inherent in that planting and thereby touch the reality of the seed's truth. So... I know that sounds a little bit mystical and a little bit deep, and indeed she was um, quite a, a mystic. 
But think about it this way. In our scriptures, we know that Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit because they come to know God's truth. And here she's basically saying the same thing, that it's okay to have some spiritual poverty and a sense of emptiness and a sense of void as long as we face it bravely and squarely and allow God to plant the seed of truth in that place. So she became a deeply spiritual person and as it progressed, there was an experience of, she watched um, a, a Portuguese procession. Um, it was a religious procession that was happening in a fishing village. And during that procession, her response was that she came to an understanding that Christianity was a religion of the slaves, that slaves cannot help belonging to it, that being a slave, being a, a servant, suffering with God is part of our, our Christian faith. On another occasion, she was in the chapel in Assisi in Italy, and she'd been dealing with these migraines that she had. And she knelt down on the floor and she had this unifying experience and she felt the suffering of Christ in the suffering of her migraines. And every day after that, Christ was the center of her life. Um, so had a transformative experience through her suffering. So one of her most famous quotes is, if we go down into ourselves, we find that we possess exactly what we desire. Now, sometimes her mysticism did take her off course. She had a tendency to, to go towards Gnosticism, which is Gnosticism is a, a belief and a special knowledge of God that is only given to a very few. And of course, that's not the, the understanding that we have of God, that God came for us all, and that God reveals God's self in so many different ways that it, and, and it is available for everyone. But she still is remembered as one of the most compelling religious figures of the modern age. So there you have Simone Weil, and I hope that the story about her life might have brought you some inspiration today, uh, especially in regards to not being afraid to face our own suffering, not being afraid to enter into the suffering of another because it's there that we do find and encounter the Christ and the truth of the word of God's love and mercy and grace. And that brings us to the folks that we need to be in prayer for this day. Uh, we lift up the family of Renee Martinez Luna, Meg Carroll, uh, her his wife, um, and all of Renee's sons and family. Renee passed away in Mexico this last week, and so we remember uh, her loss and the loss of Renee's family, uh, the loss to the whole of the Georgetown South community um, through his death, and as soon as there are plans to celebrate his life, we will be sure to get the word out. Um, we also learned that Woody Merchant, uh, Sini Merchant's husband died, and so we uh, lift the Merchant family in our prayers, including Mary Lou, um, in that prayer and, and ask for comfort and God's grace to surround them at this time. Um, we do, I'm just going to kind of read through quite a, a long list, but some of the newer concerns that came through this week. Um, luckily, Victoria's dad, Des, had no cancer in the MRI that was done, and so thank you for your pray faithful prayers for Des. Uh, also, Cindy gives thanks uh, for the answer to prayers um, that her sister and her sons have recovered from COVID. Um, but that her brother-in-law continues to fight COVID. 
right now, um, taken to the ER at one point, and also one of her neighbors, Dee Dee, was taken to the ER uh, this weekend with uh, complications from diabetes. We're praying for Jim and for Pam. Jim had some further cardiac procedures last week. Praying for Tammy, who is on a ventilator from COVID. Uh, praying for Jonathan's neighbor also, who was taken uh, to the hospital this last weekend. Jordan is asking for prayers for her friends with cancer. Christine's friend, Karen in Florida, had a massive stroke. Yarlene has a friend, Jennifer, with COVID and dealing with shortness of breath and all the, the complications to the lung issues. Dee and Rick are asking for prayers for their daughter-in-law's mom um, the, and her mother's husband, who both have COVID. You see, we're hearing so many more cases of COVID right now. Ron asked for prayers for his brother, Lyle, is in the hospital in Kansas. And so we remember Ron and Lyle this day. Uh, Cindy's brother-in-law, Doug, has COVID. Mike and Holly ask for prayers for Yvonne with cancer. Uh, for, Do for Tom, who has uh, joined AA. And for all those who are uh, making the path of the 12 steps, we lift up in prayer. When we talk about trying to escape the void, you know, that it's human nature to want the easy way out, and it can seem sometimes like uh, an addiction would be the easy way out, but it's actually the harder way. And so this idea that Simone Weil places of squarely and bravely facing ourselves is what happens in AA, um, and it's a, an important spiritual program in addition to our lives um, and brings health to the whole family. Uh, so we're thankful for all those that serve in that arena and those who continue to walk that path. We keep prayers for um, those who are grieving. Justin lost his mom. Um, continued prayers for all of our teachers and students and administrators. Prayers for Trevin, who was uh, sent on active duty. And so uh, also prayers for his family, Terry and Russ, who haven't seen him. Prayers for Renee's mom, Karen, who had cataract surgery. For Sharon, who's recovering from some complications from her cataract surgery. Prayers for Beth as she recovers from her surgery. Um, Valerie had a liver transplant and is recovering from that. Roland uh, asked for prayers for Ken and Dawn with cancer. Bo and Charlie, who have dementia and Ernie with Alzheimer's, and also a friend named Bruce who was in long-term care. John and Sandy have friends, Terry and Brad, both dealing with cancer. Um, Barb is preparing for surgery on February 1st, and so we keep her in our prayers. Hunter and Betty ask for prayers for John, Dave, Rose, Sherry, and Marcy as they endure chemo. And cancer during this time. Robin, who is recovering from pneumonia, and Johnny, who's recover recovering from COVID, and also Sandy, who is in ICU with COVID. We're praying for Ruth's brother, Hal, who has COVID. Edie asks for prayers for Diana, who has lung cancer, uh, for Susan, who is grieving, for Edie's sister, Janet, as they seek reconciliation. Teresa is praying that she can be forgiven what a wonderful prayer. And praying for all those who need food and homes and jobs. Katie asked for prayers for Garth, who's suffering from cancer and from COVID. Moses and Tanya are inviting God's peace to prevail. Gail and Gary asked for prayers for Jan, who has a brain tumor and have surgery again on February 1st. Uh, Jeff and Ann asked for prayers for Justin. Beth asks for prayers for Ryland, who has cancer. Barbara and Jen are asking for prayers for Linda, who has COVID. Uh, prayers for Lynn's sister-in-law, Catherine, and Lynn's brother, Steve, um, family on uh, the death of Catherine's father, Ben, who had cancer. 
Barbara is thanking God for a beautiful day. <laughs> Paul and Debbie are asking for prayers for unity in our country. Uh, Linda's family has lost three uh, members to cancer since October, so praying for their grief. Praying for Dave and Darlene's son, Jason. And May is asking for prayers for Randy. And there are unspoken requests amongst these. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. Prayers for Francis and Nelson. And good to see you here, Drew. Um, so good to lift up by name uh, those folks who are in need of God's prayer. Remember what Simone uh, uh, Wheel said about attention? Attention is an act of generosity. And so thank you for your generosity and your attention to these prayer concerns, not just for today, but throughout the week. And we have followed along with several of these families. Um, we also continue to pray for Rue and Gary, who have cancer and are receiving treatment. So I invite you to center yourself on your breathing. Take a moment to allow yourself to feel your heartbeat, the warmth of blood flowing through your arms and legs to your hands and your feet, giving thanks for this sacred moment a moment in which we are aware that we are alive. We give thanks that we can join with the heart of God as we pray. Most gracious God, Thank you for the blessing of this day, for all the ways that your presence is already filling it. We thank you for an opportunity to set our minds on scriptures, scriptures that invite us to remember you with thanks and praise in all of our circumstances. scriptures that remind us to set our attention on you that if that is the most loving thing that we can do today then we have done enough but Lord God as we read the prayer concerns you can hear that our hearts are broken and that we are worried and anxious for people who we love and care for and we are calling on you to surround them with your healing power. Using every way possible for you to reveal your goodness and grace in their lives through the hands and the feet of the medical community, through the hands and hearts of friends and neighbors, through family relationships that extend near and far. Thank you for the healing that is offered right here and now amongst this Facebook community. The opportunity that we have to greet one another and to join our hearts together with yours. Help us to take a moment to center ourselves on the void that we feel in our lives. The place where it seems that we suffer most, where we are afflicted. The place that takes us into a, a wilderness, a place where we feel lost. And help us to face that squarely and bravely, knowing that you are there with us. 
and remind us that is it is your grace that actually helps us understand that void so that we can know you better. And so we do thank you this day. And we invite your mercy, forgiveness, your healing, your strength upon our souls as we face that which challenges us, those places of suffering. Help us all to see our suffering as one way for us to align ourselves with others who suffer. To see ourselves as those who serve, not as slaves that are bound in chains, but as those who serve out of love and grace, bound by your love and your grace. We've heard the names of those who are grieving. May your comfort console them. May the promise of eternal life in Christ be an assurance for each and every family. We pray for all those who are dealing with grief on a daily basis. Again, members of the medical community and members of mortuaries and members of funeral homes, and we pray your strength to be with them through all these losses. We ask your protection on everyone who is dealing with COVID right now. Please, God, spare the lives of those who are dealing with COVID. Help each one of us to continue to do all that we can to prevent the spread. We pray for those places where vaccines are being given and for those who are receiving them. Help us to continue to navigate these days with faithfulness, with attentiveness, for the well-being of others around us. We thank you most of all this day for uh, all the blessings that you pour into our lives that we are so well aware of, the family members and friends who bring us joy and delight for the food that is placed on our tables, for the, the roof that we have over our heads, for the warmth that we live in. We thank you for protecting us from cold weather, and we ask your blessing on those who have little food and who are out in the cold this day. Remind us to center the rest of this day on Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So great to be with you all. Um, glad that we had this time this morning. Before I read the benediction, I did post a couple of pieces of music, and these are beautiful piano places, pieces. Uh, I'm not sure I can, rec I can pronounce the artist's name. Ludwig is his first name, uh, or Ludovico Inualde. I don't know, maybe some of you know him. Both of these songs have videos that, one is from Iceland, um, the other one is just a beautiful snowfall, and with the cold weather this day uh, and the potential for snow coming, I thought these might be beautiful pieces for us to use uh, for our time of reflection in the days ahead, so enjoy those. And now I close with this benediction, and this is the, the benediction from Shane Claiborne. 
May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen and amen. Uh, good morning. All. Uh, so good to be with you all. I see you here now, Christine. I don't know if I saw you before, um, but so good to be with you all. Have a great day and uh, stay warm this weekend. All right. Take care.